Firstly, it's just taking the selling price minus of the CPF that has been used for housing minus the outstanding loan and you will get your cash proceed. Okay, so let's start with the outstanding loan first. Okay, there's two kinds of uh, buyers or owners. They use two kinds of loan. One, uh, namely, is the HDB loan and second is the bank loan. So for bank loan, if I say you want to know your outstanding loan, it's just easily to call up your bank okay, to ask them what or your outstanding loan. Okay, then for HDB, there are steps for you to go through. Okay, so firstly, we have to go to the HDB website. Okay, so just go to this website, hdb.gov.fg. Okay, from here, there's a login here. Click on login. Click on my HDB page. Okay, then they will direct you to the sync pass. Click on the sync pass and log in. Okay, once you log in, you will be this will be the page that appears. Okay, my flat. Okay, click on my flat. Then it will come up to this page. You click on financial info. Then you will have all these details. Okay, so if let's say if you see the first part here, okay, there's one three six six one that is. 32869 and 1569. Okay, this is all outstanding installment late payment charges, but it's already included in the outstanding balance. So if let's say you have uh outstandings, okay, what you need to look at is just the outstanding balance. Okay, just use that number. Outstanding one, one three six six one one. Okay, okay, so go back again to your Google page, go to cpf.gov.sg. Okay, one the CPF. Page is open, go to login. Then they will also direct you to, to log into your sync pass. Okay, once you log into the sync pass, this will be the thing that will be appear. Okay, so you come up at this page, okay, just click the three lines over there. Then there will be a drop down box. Click on my CPF. Then after that, after you click my CPF, there will be another page that will be sent you to. Click on my dashboard. Then click on home ownership. And then there you have it. There's a principal amount drawn and also an acute interest. Okay, so what you need to do is actually to plus both of this principal amount and acute interest, and that will be the amount that will be returned back to your CPF. Okay, so again, 10655 plus acute interest if it's 67, which is equivalent to 111. Okay, so uh, in this demonstration, okay, I will just put as Mrs. D, do not. Uh, did not put any of his CPF or uh, into the house, so there's no need for her to return back to the CPF. So now we have the CPF and we have the outstanding loan. So now we're left with the selling price of the house. So how do one judge the selling price of the house or the target selling price? Okay, is it based uh, on your neighbor, your neighbor who, who is selling, and you say, oh, she's marketing at this uh, XXX price? Okay, actually, that's not the right way to see the selling price. Okay, because okay, uh, for a transaction to be to meet, okay, both buyers and sellers must, must come to an agreement to a price. Okay, so what we need to do is actually to go to HDB Map Services. Okay, then click on it. Then click on the on this top box here. Enter your address. Okay, for my case is 512C Yishun. Okay, click on this thing here with a flag. Okay, then the flag will pop up. It okay, wants to click back on the the address, okay, you see 512C, Street 51, okay, you have the lease date, which is on the 2017, then uh, remaining years, it's very healthy, still very new flat, okay, only seven years old or six years old. Okay, then you have to break down the flat, a four room and a five room, then come to the resale flat of this block, okay? You can use this as a benchmark, actually, okay, to see how much people are buying, okay, then you can inquire. Okay, you see here, there's a very healthy transaction over here, so four room is, from 475 to 538, and a five room is from 600 to 750. I will use uh, four room as an example. Huh? So what I like to do is actually to click on resale price and see the highest price. The okay, highest price of four room was sold at 556, and there was also another transaction at 475. Okay, so we are here already. Okay, so I was mentioning to you, okay, my example, we use a third floor unit. Huh? Okay, so generally, a higher floor unit will fetch a higher price and a lower floor will get a lower price. Okay, you see level 12 at 546, level 6 at 538, then there's a level 12 here at 535, then uh, level 6, 510, and level 4 to level 6 will be about 475. Okay, you see this is the same kind of, um, I mean, the same kind of level. Okay, however, one, it is about... $35,000 different. Eh? So this could mean 
two things. Okay, one could be the um how's the block, how's the unit located? Is it a corner or corridor unit? Generally, a corner unit would fetch a higher price, okay, because of, of the scarcity of a corner unit, okay, where more buyers or more owners like uh, the privacy of a corner unit. Okay, uh, that could be one, okay. One could be because it is four to six, maybe the higher price one is at the sixth floor and the lower price one is at the fourth floor. Okay, since this is at the third floor, okay, um I would I would usually put the price okay slightly higher, okay, than the uh, I guess the price would be lower than 475, okay. But then uh, for this for this demonstration sake, okay, let's put it at four hundred and seventy-five thousand dollars. So what we need to do is just a uh, simple mathematics, just take the selling price minus CPF minus the Outstanding loan. So 475 minus 111952 minus 136611. Okay, so the cash proceed will be a total of 226437. Another way to check for selling price, okay, the easiest way also to check for selling price, okay, actually to what you can do is just to scan this QR code. Okay, from there you can receive the value of your home and the neighborhood. Okay, uh, this is a free service by SRX. Okay, where they will send monthly updates on the value of your house. Okay, so just take this uh, a short moment to just scan this QR code. So first part, the cash proceed is done. 